Do you have to have a low mileage classic Mercedes to have a great ownership experience? I think you know how I'm going to answer the question. I'm going to answer the question with a, uh, maybe I should answer the question with a question. I should say, do you have to have a, a um, man, do you have to fly on a 787, a brand new 787 to have a great vacation? Or can you get to your destination on an older plane like a 767? Well, the truth is that Mercedes makes forever cars. And forever cars don't have a mileage expiration date. I know that there are some pretty worn out high mileage cars. We've seen a lot of rusty cars or previously wrecked cars. So maybe I'm defeating my own point here, but I get asked quite a bit. This whole video started because I get contacted by people who seem to be pretty serious. And then I, I realize who I'm, that they, that they really have no personal experience with the cars. And they'll say, oh, I want a 123 or a 126. I want a super low mileage car. I want a fully sorted car. And I'm like, okay. Well, you realize that super low mileage doesn't mean that the car is going to be a better car. You could take a two or 300,000 mile Mercedes and actually do all the repairs it needs, end up spending about the same amount of money you would with the low mileage car versus the high mileage car and end up with a pretty decent usable car. And what I'm noticing is that the demand for low mileage Mercedes is really high and sometimes irrationally high. And the demand for high mileage cars, even cars that are fully sorted is almost non-existent. And this underscores the fact that people really do not appreciate the cars for what they are. Like somebody who wants a low mileage, perfect Mercedes is probably getting off more on the visuals than they are on the actual mechanics and engineering of the car. Because the way the cars are built and engineered is literally as a forever car. At least the cars I work on. We're not talking about the 210. We're not talking about the 211. We're not talking about the 212. We're not talking, in many cases, about the 140 as much as my friend Eric is going to hear that and want to shoot me. Uh, we're, we're actually talking about the pre-1990 Mercedes platforms, 115, 124, 116, 113, etc. These cars don't have a mileage expiration date. You can put 500,000 miles on one of these things. Just garage it, keep out of the elements, maintain it, you know. Don't treat the car like garbage like so many of the cars did. I've seen plenty of high mileage Mercedes that were extremely good, solid, well-kept cars. And one of the biggest pet peeves that I have is that people often confuse the car being low mileage with being a good car or high mileage being a bad car or a worn out car. And it, it, really, it really isn't like that. The, the problem is we see some really good high mileage cars get sold too cheap, they go to bad ownership and they deteriorate rapidly. And believe me, a low mileage car can do the same thing. A low mileage can car, car can go to the wrong ownership and can also deteriorate rapidly. And then guess what you have? You have a low mileage car that looks like it is high mileage. And nobody cares about the numbers in the odometer when you have things like rust holes in your trunk, you know. I think that the majority of people that approach me looking for low mileage cars because they just want a nice Mercedes to enjoy or, or either they're not telling me three things. The first thing they're not telling me is they're not telling me whether they actually want a nice car. They're holding the car as an investment. If you're holding the car as an investment, sure. I understand that. If you want, if you're a Mercedes collector and you want to have uniformity in your collection, you're willing to pay top dollar. I understand having a bunch of low mileage cars. That's where they should be. They should be in collections. They should be getting very little use. So if your intention is to buy the car and show it and use it very minimally and preserve it, sure, buy a low mileage car. But if you're like, oh, I want a car to drive. I want a driver. Then you go out and you, you're irrational about it and you spend $50,000 buying a 300 CD that, with 35, 40,000 miles and you say, I want a driver and then you never end up driving it or whatever. It's better if you take that money and go buy a 200,000 mile 300 CD or a 300,000 mile 300 CD, sort the car out, actually drive the car. It shows that a lot of people think to themselves and they hear, oh, a Mercedes is a forever car. They think, oh, what a pleasant thought, but I'm still not going to acknowledge it. They're, they still don't find the bottom of the rabbit hole because 
American cars and even Japanese cars are all built to wear out. And so they can't wrap their head around the fact that there's such a thing as a car that lasts for five or 600,000 miles, unless you're a taxi driver driving a Crown Victoria, or you have an F-350 Super Duty with a 7.3 Power Stroke. Most of the time when you think about a car lasting 500,000 miles, you're like, there's no way. You know, when I say lasting 500,000 miles, I don't mean that at the end of that 500,000 mile cycle, it's going to be dead. I mean that major components, maybe such as the engine or gearbox or rear end or all three are going to have to be rebuilt with parts that are available from the original manufacturer. Then you turn around and you put another 100,000 miles on it. The structural integrity of the car's electrical system, body, interior, etc. is still there. Just don't throw your butt down in the seat and break all the seat springs, you know. Um... I find also that there's this sort of irrational, uh, this irrational perception that you can't make a low mile, a high mileage Mercedes as good as a low mileage car. And in some cases, it might be a little tricky. Like we had a 380 SL in here, and it was a color changed Euro market car. It was originally light ivory. Somebody had painted it dark red. The seats have been reupholstered in so-so condition. You know, you could get that car from a 180,000 mile car to look like it's a 100,000 mile car, maybe by repainting it or redoing the seats, but you could still tell it's sort of a restored car. But if you get a car that has nice exterior finishes, a nice dash, nice seats, nice carpets, and it is 350,000 miles on it, it needs a bunch of mechanical repairs. Sure, why not? It's all doable. It's possible, you know? That's that's what I'm saying. It's totally possible. So that's that's what I'm trying to get people to do on this channel. I'm trying to get them to accept the fact that they don't make any more classic Mercedes. We gotta work with what we have, and not everybody gets the 20,000 mile unicorn. Let the 20,000 mile unicorns stay in 20,000 mile unicorn condition. Let them go to responsible collectors, you know? Our job as the people who watch this channel is to take high mileage cars, put them back on the road, use them, and enjoy them. There's nothing wrong with that. So I hope you guys like this video and uh, I hope you like, share, and subscribe. And if you like my shirt, you can go to my YouTube homepage and click on the merchandise button and buy one yourself. So you can look better than I do in this shirt. <laughs> so we'll uh, see you in the next video. And if you're working on sorting out a high mileage Mercedes or you really believe in Mercedes engineering, then uh, I salute you because that's what the name of the game is with these cars, believing that the engineers who put them together built them literally to last lifetime after lifetime.